Welcome, ladies, to the Real Estate Investor Show, providing inspiration, strategies, and insight to empower women investors to live balanced and financially free lives. Now, here are your co-hosts, Liz and Andressa. Welcome back, ladies. This is Liz. And this is Andressa. Welcome back to the Real Estate Investor Show. We are talking learned lessons from my very first private money partner. It was some time ago, so it's hard for me to even remember, but I have three lessons that you can apl apply as you're finding new private money partners. Okay, awesome. So what I'm going to talk about here is just a quick who that private money partner was, how we found him. And then I'm going to share three learned lessons. And those learned lessons is just to start to plant the seeds, cultivate, share, and home runs are overrated. So those are my three lessons I'm going to get to in a moment. So really quick, I was, at the time, my husband and I were growing our portfolio and we had used our own money. We used like our parents' money and friends and really, you know, our, our, really our parents, my parents and my husband's parents were really the only quote, quote unquote private money partners at that point. And so I, uh, you know, him and I were really going all in on multifamily. We got very focused, very, you know, let's, let's really, really get, get zoned in on multifamily. So we did. And obviously, as you scale, you can't create money out of thin air and you have, there's a lot of creative ways to do it. And we said, let's start to get really, you know, clear on maybe growing our, our portfolio through with other people. And we just put it out there as a goal, as an intention. At the same time, I was working full time. And one, a good friend of mine from, from grad school uh, lives in, in New York City. And so something that I always do just in general is if I'm going somewhere, teaching, training, I wasn't in that, you know, uh, management consulting work. I tend to try to kind of maximize my time. And, and so I, I did that. I said, hey, are you around for a quick coffee? You know, I haven't seen you in a while. And it was just someone, it was a good friend of mine. And I said, I'm going to be in Manhattan. I'm never really there. So let's meet up. So we did. And while, you know, it was like right after my workshop. So we, we had like a coffee meeting and just caught up. And during that time, I shared what I was doing. He shared what he was doing as a financial planner. And, you know, I shared what, what we we're up to in, in real estate. And he said, I would love to invest in real estate. I just don't have a lot of time. And so I think those are like the beautiful words that people say when they want to be involved in investing. They just don't have the complete time to do it all themselves. So from there, we invited him to where we were investing and, and, and we kind of, you know, really started to create a partnership and create a relationship even deeper than what I remembered in graduate school. So we uh, ended up becoming 50-50 partners on, a, on, a, on two single family homes. And what was unique about this was that he was an active partner at, along with us. We were the boots on the ground and he was, uh, he audited the books. He had different roles, personally guaranteed the loan and was, you know, a key partner for us in that, in that deal. He put 50 grand in, we put $0 in at that point. Ended up being a really solid project and ended up being something that we grew with him. He's still uh, a partner of ours, you know, but 12, 12 years later. So I, I wanted to share kind of just the, what are the learned lessons when you dissect that story? Because so many times we talk about different experiences. And, and I, I said, let me dissect this for, for, for you ladies and men that are, are listening to really use in your own world, in your own, you know, in your own kind of experiences. So you can kind of replicate this because success is all about replicating what's working. So number one, something I did naturally and something that you can do more intentionally is the first learn lesson is cultivate. So when you travel anywhere, you're looking at a project, you're looking at a deal, even maybe visiting family, how can you cultivate relationships in your network when you're already going somewhere for another purpose? Now, I'm all about enjoying family time when you're with family, enjoying business time when you're in the business mode. But again, if you can incorporate, because we're all kind of that, that entrepreneurial lifestyle, you're creating the lifestyle that you want and need. How can you create this opportunity where when you're going up a, a particular location is that you know and like and respect someone in that area? How do you get the chance to get some time, some face time with them or create a new relationship when you're there? So I'm a big fan of really wherever you travel, cultivate relationships within your network. New or existing relationships would be the key. I want to give you a quick tip, right? So then, then you are like, um, but I'm going to Dallas, Texas, and I don't know anybody there. Well, guess what? You got to go to our page, therealestateinvestor.com slash meetups. We have over 60 locations in the country and Canada. So if you don't know anybody in that area, well, we have a local meetup in Dallas. 
reach out to that chapter, and then you can start making connections with the women there. They have their monthly meetings there. Like who, who knows who over here, if that's the case where whatever you are going and you market, if you don't have the family there or whatever the situation might be, think about, okay, if I don't have family members, how can I connect with local folks? And the investor meetup is, is a good option. Love that. Yep. Great, great suggestion. The second, the second learn lesson is to share. What I mean by share is that, you know, I was in that coffee meeting with him and, you know, I could have like played it light of what we were doing and investing, but I think the key is to really share what you're up to and also share the opportunity to work with you. So I didn't just say, oh, we buy rentals. And I left it at that. I kind of, I, I, I remember because I'm, you're almost sharing with people as though they are a potential prospect for you, not in a salesy way, but just sharing what's up for you. I knew he was a financial planner. I knew I always liked trust and respected him. I also knew we needed, we needed money in our business, right? I knew all those things. So now I didn't have coffee just to pitch him, but I wanted to build a relationship. I always liked and trusted and respected him. And who knows where that goes, right? So that was my intention. So when I, when I was sharing, I shared what we were doing. And I also shared how we were financing the deals. Because if you're going to enroll a private money partner and you're really going to explain how things work, it's helpful to share how you're actually doing that today. Again, not like where you have a spreadsheet or, you know, be, be mindful of that, right? I didn't bring a spreadsheet out and pitch him. I didn't do that. I just said, hey, we buy rent. We went to, we bought rental properties at X. We fix them up with this amount of money. And then we, and then we refinance them and usually pull out X, Y, Z money. And we do that over and over again, because that's what we were doing at the Burr strategy at the time. So don't just say you invest in real estate. That's vague and people don't even know what you do. You have to be specific. It's helpful to be specific with numbers not because you're making a certain amount of money, but more so just to give them a holistic view of what you're doing so they can kind of insert themselves like, oh, that's interesting. I can maybe be part of that. So I think that's, uh, it's not just sharing, but sharing kind of like the, you know, how they can insert themselves into it. The third learn lesson here, Andressa, I said, I, you know, I'm a, I'm a baseball fan. I'm a Mets fan in particular. So I like to use baseball analogies. So home runs are overrated. Just hit a single is my third lesson to share with you. So what do I mean by that? Everyone that goes to that plate tries to hit a home run. And home runs are overrated. They're great when you do hit them. But often singles will get you to win a game in baseball. And it's the same thing in real estate. So what I mean by that is that you really want to be able to hit a single when you are in the business of investing so that you can share a proof of concept. Mm. In other words, I'm sitting with him. I then gave him an example, like a proof of concept. In other words, I did what I want to do more of. And that matters in this business because I have a proof of concept. I've done it before. And I didn't need to have 20,000 units for me to share that experience. I was talking to a woman the other day and she's like, I want to, I want to raise money. I want to work with private money partners. I have about five deals. I, I don't know if I really have a proof of concept. She did the same thing five times and she had success with it. She has a proof of concept. So my point in sharing that with you is that small projects are just about getting the proof of concept. Don't go out there and try to get the home run. Don't try to get the 10 unit or the 20 unit. Just do a deal so you can create that proof of concept so you have something to talk about when you're connecting with people. I bought it this, I did this, and then I refined it, refinanced it this. And I'd love to do more of those. And also for lenders, right? If you're inexperienced, if you partner with somebody, right? I don't care if you got 10%, 20% of the profit, but you you participate in that deal from A to Z, you had a, a role. That goes in your tracking record that you will use to talk to other people, to your lenders. That is super valuable. And I, I think people get caught up too much and like, oh, oh I just need 50-50 or whatever that is. And they don't count the experience that and the impact that that project alone doesn't matter the size will count in building new relationships with potential partners and lenders in the yep. industry. Yeah, and 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 just last last point here is that that single, if you will, isn't about the single, but just like in baseball, someone gets on the plate, 
someone gets on the, um, the base, then the next person comes up, then they advance them. And that's exactly what doing a single in real estate is because what happens is that one private money partner for that one deal that yielded us $300 in monthly cash flow, that didn't, that, that didn't create financial freedom for us. But what it did is it introduced us over a lifetime of 10 more investors. That, that 300 became a lot more. So it wasn't about the deal, it was about the momentum and it was about the proof of concept. So I, you know, I think that the three keys, again, cultivate, just start getting your cultivation skills up. You don't have to be like someone who has to meet with a million people, but just start to say, how can I cultivate a relationship with where I'm going and what I'm already doing? Number two, share what you're doing, but don't just share vague information, share specifics. People love real estate investing. That's why HGTV exists, share specifics. People are intrigued by it. And thirdly, don't, don't get so in, enamored by home runs. Just get a single, get on base. And, and really create that ongoing uh, proof of concept. So that's what I have for you today. We'd love to hear what's working for you, what's not working. And that's where our Facebook community is, uh, you know, there for you. So tag us. What's coming up for you? Thank you so much for listening. If you enjoyed this podcast and want to receive updates on our next interviews, go to our website, therealestateinvestor.com. There, you can subscribe to our show, become part of our investor community, and get updates on upcoming episodes. If you like our show, please share it with other women who would benefit. And don't forget to leave us a rating on iTunes. We'd really appreciate it. And as always, we encourage you to take one action as a result of today's show and put it into motion so you can live both a financially free and balanced life. Thanks for spending time with us. Ciao.